Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello welcome back to NPTEL the national program on technology enhanced learning which is a joint venture by the Indian Institutes of Technology and the Indian Institute of Science our course is entitled Cultural Studies and we are at the moment in module 3 entitled Sites. Today the topic of discussion in this class is Ethnicity, Race and Nation. As always let us do a recap of the last lecture. The last lecture was devoted to an important term in cultural studies namely language and there are reasons why I have placed language in module 3 devoted to sites because language as I had mentioned in the last lecture is both a site and at the same time is constitutive of culture even of cultural studies ok. So, we saw as we look, uh, look at this slide please we saw the language is both a means and a medium for meaning generation. It ties into culture because culture too is about the generation of meaning through science ok. So, science and the semiotic system is what we have first in common between language and culture. So, much so that language is said to be like a culture if uh, uh, sorry culture is said to be like a language if not a language. Next we read from Chris Barker where uh, he says that culture can be regarded as regulated maps of meaning and that these maps are constituted by criss crossing discourses through which any cultural practice or object may gain significance for us ok. The important term however, is that these meanings regulated maps of meaning etcetera are temporary sort of uh, uh, temporary coagulations of meaning, temporary mappings they are never final and that is the beauty of culture, that is the beauty of cultural studies that meanings are never fixed, they are always fluid and flexible. As we said culture therefore, is like a language ok, it happens in language and then that way it is. Um, uh, uh, languages also or may also be considered a site. Then um, to explicate it further we found that there are simi uh, similar mechanisms at work ok as far as language is concerned as far as culture is concerned ok. The way it works is like uh, the way it is similar is like this in the sense that there are similar mechanisms at work in both language and culture and these are the selection and organization of science. This is what we saw in the last lecture. Then we um, uh, uh, brought in through Barker um, the formulations of the philosopher Richard Rorty who saw culture as also as conversation and grave, gave a great primacy to language. Rorty and um, other philosophers of the same uh, orientation of the same uh, formulations ok, belong to the school of thought known as anti representationalism ok, which simply means that one cannot represent faithfully anything in this. Why? Principally because it is through the mediation of language, through the mediation of discourse ok, limited by the limits of discourses ok, only through these that we may uh, we may perceive, we may comprehend reality ok. For instance, there is no God like vantage point from which to survey the world and language separately in order to establish the relationship between them. Therefore, it also follows f 
from the formulations of philosophers like Rorty, etc., that one does not have any objective truths. And you will be um, interested to know that this so called objective truth uh, and the fact that we cannot have these uh, you know purely objective truths is also applied okay, to science. Right? Uh, this we will talk about later when we talk about science, culture and science or science and technology in cultural studies. Therefore, we have only justifications. Okay? We have only justifications where we initially thought or, or where it was hitherto thought that they were objective truths. Therefore, the positing of language is a free, a free floating system rather than a human tool is the owners of such a way of looking at language of, of uh, considering language as a site of culture. Okay. Many feel that you know this decoupling of signification from practices, from habits and routines, uh, there is a theoretical gap okay, between signification and the material. And the, there, there was one point which I left out in the last lecture and I will quickly you know include these here which is a critique of the idea of language as you know uh, wholly constitutive of culture okay so these are some of the problems in the sense that there is as I, as we have seen here as barker says here a theoretical gap between uh, signification processes practices and the you know and and the material and the what he calls the elevation of semiotic theory or the study of science over the li linguistic competences of living persons that is to see our uh, you know a propensity to see um, to see uh, people uh, to, to, to see the abstractness of the system rather than really looking at its use okay by what he calls living persons and so there may be really an over concentration on codes and texts at the experience or, or, or at the expense of real people or of people who make utterances in concrete situations uh, and uh, people who are subjects who are speaking subjects okay, who perform these uh, spoken acts within certain given circumstances. So, this is one of uh, you know the most important critiques being uh, you know um, brought up against the idea of language being whole uh, uh, culture being wholly constitutive of language. Therefore, the importance is on the utterances of persons in social context. Fine. So, after this brief recap, we are now going to go into uh, there are three terms here really ethnicity, race and nation and we are going to look briefly at these and uh, why we have clubbed them together is something that is going to be clear as we speak about these and this will also uh, you know lead on uh, to our next lecture which is on globalization. Now, as always let me declare uh, the text to be used in this lecture from which we will be gleaning most of the points and at times even, even you know extracts from the text which I shall be explaining to you from time to time. So, Chris Barker's cultural studies theory and practice is our key source. In fact, he devotes he devotes a whole chapter entitled ethnicity, race and nation. Fine. Let us look at these three terms ethnicity, race and nation. Now, the, uh, uh, many of you will realize that these terms ethnicity, race and nation are not terms that are that only belong to cultural studies. For instance, where do these terms also belong? Before coming into cultural studies, the domains within which these terms were used could be anthropology, sociology, political science, etc. Okay. So, you will recognize that uh, or you, you have come across these terms and our job here is uh, you know to not uh, not to talk in the vocabulary or in the discourse of 
areas or disciplines like anthropology, sociology and political science. Okay. We are going to see how ethnicity, race and nation are looked at particularly from a cultural studies perspective. Okay. And the answer, the first you know, a point that we need to look at as Barker has shown us is this, that all these terms, three terms within the discourse of cultural studies are considered okay, under the concept of identity. You will recall that in module 2, uh, we uh, devoted a whole uh, lecture okay, on uh, identity as a key concept. Right? So, you see how these theoretical tools are going to be very useful for you as you try and apply these to other uh, to for instance to the to the sites that we have been talking about or to you know to make it makes it is very easy uh, you know once you learn these concepts right key concepts to apply these to various domains and areas. So, ethnicity, race and nation in cultural studies are seen as what as forms of cultural identity. Okay. Next, now we shall look at the scope again having said in the beginning that um, you know uh, they are con these three terms are considered as forms of cultural identity. We are going to unpack this and we are going to look at it through Chris Barker's words at the scope okay, uh, that is opened up or the range uh, you know of of explorations that are there as far as studying ethnicity, race and nation is concerned within the rubric of cultural studies. First, the first point that is brought to us by Barker is this. This is the shifting, look at this, the shifting character of cultural understandings of race and identity in terms of representation. Okay. There are two, th two things here, one is that race and ethnicity, okay, we understand these through representation and you will recall that we had talked about uh, representation and the problematics of representation in um, you know I think over two lectures if I am not uh, if I recall in module 2. Okay. So, Barker says that among the scope or the and within the range is a studying race ethnicity as uh, you know as are available to us through representation and secondly okay he calls it not just representation but trying to understand the shifting character let's look at this sentence again he talks about the shifting character of cultural understandings of ra race and ethnicity in terms of representation Okay, this is one of the ways in which you can sort of do studies of ethnicity, race and nation. Second, the cultural politics of race, it is not that the cultural politics of race or the politics of race, it is not that it is not this thing is not you know this aspect, it is not that it is not studied in sociology or anthropology or political science. Okay. So, again as we uh, you know kind of uh, narrow down, in, uh, narrow down in a positive sense as that is why I am trying rather we try to zoom in into the most important uh, feature of studying these within cultural studies is again cultural politics as a politics of representation. Okay? So, representation is the most important term here, how are ethnicities, how are nations, how are um, uh, races represented to people okay and what is the politics of such representation for instance we know that uh, from our lecture on representation lectures on representation we know that representation is not ever neutral okay that there are issues of power the issues of politics there are so many issues regarding the representation of any cultural form or product right so the cultural politics of race as i said which may be uh, an area of study in other disciplines is seen particularly in cultural studies as a politics of representation. Next, the changing forms of cultural identity okay, associated with ethnicity. Right? So, again we have to understand that ethnic identity 
or even racial identity for that matter okay, are never fixed, they are never kind of uh, established once and for all. Okay. These like their representations and their shifting characters right, the, the claims forms uh, that you know uh, ethnic identity takes right or ethnic, ethnic identity will take from time to time is always one that is changing. So, we also need to see okay, apart from the politics of representation, apart from the shifting character of representation, we are also uh, we also include within the scope right of cultural studies of ethnicity, race and nation, uh, how these forms of identity keep changing. Okay. Next point number 4, the intersections between race, class and gender. It is not that we are to study or we are to explore these as discrete terms, right. Um, within ethnicity and race and even nationhood, okay, how are the variables like class, like gender, how are they to be accommodated or how are they, uh, or how do they not fit in and how do these variables crisscross and what are, you know, what the dynamics are of such, uh, such um, uh, variables crisscrossing within the general, um, you know, within the general, uh, you could say panorama of ethnicity of race and nation. This too is uh, also this too comes under the under the uh, scope of cultural studies of ethnicity, race and nation. Finally, point number 5, the cultural legacy of colonialism. Obviously, colonialism is the most important factor, the discourses of colonialism, okay, the cultural constructions of um, colonialism, the representations of colonialism of different ethnicities of different races, okay, of different nations and those, uh, you know, those areas of the globe that were not modern nation states, how even the legacy of colonialism contributed to the formation of the nation states. Okay. So, this is extremely important for you to remember that A, the cultural uh, studies exploration of ethnicity, race and nation is not along discrete lines of what is ethnicity, what is race and nation. Okay. Even as they are studied together, there are, there are other issues that come in which make it more complicated and more problematic. For instance, the issues of class and gender. Okay. Now, we shall see that as categories, right, as categories terms like ethnicity, race and nation okay, are discursive categories. They are discursive categories because their enunciation, uh, their uh, you know establishing okay, and uh, they, the continuities of their characters or characteristics sorry characteristics is made through different discourses about them. Okay. So, again it is also a matter uh, largely of language, right. Next, they are performative. Performative, you have, you came across this term when we look, uh, I think in the second uh, lecture that was devoted to gender, part 2 of gender, when we talked about the feminist um, and the queer theorist Judith Butler, where she talked about gender being performative. Along the same lines, we may also uh, argue that one's um, ethnic identity, one's racial identity, one's national identity is also a matter of performance. It is also performative in nature. How is it performative in nature? It is performative because as we shall see a while later, it is considered performative because um, most of the cultural forms to do with ethnicity, race and nationhood are those that are images, okay, those that are symbols, symbols, images that are invested with a lot of emotion, okay, lot of emotion of emotions of belonging, belonging to a particular ethnicity or ethnic group or belonging to a nation or, or a race. Okay. So, they are performative in that sense. 
Next, we have already seen that they are identity constructing ok. At the same time, even as identities are constructed, it does not mean that they are constructed once and for all. The important point to be noticed and which we did note a while earlier is that these identities are get always getting constructed, they, that they are shifting and unstable right. Apart from all these, one of the chief claims made by Barker here is that these categories of ethnicity, race and nation are nodal points ok. They are points of convergence, they are nodal points of identity and subjectivity. You can also say that they these themselves uh, in themselves are sites ok of identity and subjectivity and identity and subjectivity being among the core key uh, you know or key concepts in cultural studies. We may therefore, claim that if identity and subjectivity are constructed changing are played out or performed ok in within the categories of ethnicity of race and nation which are cultural categories then then they are also ethnicity race and na nation are also sites of culture ok where identities and subjectivities are are um, constructed dismantled and reconstructed ok. So, you see how uh, I hope I have been able to show you how the study of race, ethnicity and nation differs um, in cultural studies particularly when we compare these to, so to studies explorations done in the domains of anthropology, sociology and political uh, science. Not that there are they do not overlap, there are overlaps, but as we, we have seen considering these as discursive and performative uh, belongs particularly to the methodology of cultural studies ok. Next uh, let us look at this slide which is uh, from where we begin to talk about ethnicity ok. Ethnicity is about sharing ok and we shall see uh, uh, shall see here how many things are shared right by members of an ethnic uh, group or in the name of um, you know ethnicity, we see that members of an ethnic group share certain norms ok, they, they share values, they are partakers more or less of the same belief system ok, they have cultural symbols ok that are uh, with which they are emotionally um, emotionally connected ok which hold a, a great deal of value uh, in which a lot of sentiment is invested ok. It is also ethnicity is also about sharing cultural practices different uh, you know in everyday ways of, uh, of living life ok. Myths are shared particularly originary myths for instance the origins of that particular ethnic group, where they came from, how they originated along with these there are also uh, myths of uh, gods and goddesses that uh, supposed to create uh, of an originally homeland ok, if once lost to be revived etcetera ok. Then blood ties, kinship and blood ties is also another important uh, aspect that is shared by uh, members of an uh, ethnic group and a homeland ok. So, a lot is shared within the framework of ethnicity a lot is even loved ok and held dear in within uh, within the framework of ethnicity. And we have come across these terms so many so many times in the last few lectures myths, values, norms cultural practices, cultural symbol, symbols, beliefs etcetera, images ok. Uh, you see how ethnicity becomes a matter of cultural studies also in very important ways right. Now, let us read um, this is by Barker in his book Cultural Studies Theory and Practice. Now, let us read what he has to say. Ethnicity is a relational concept this is the first point to be noted ok. 
ethnicity is a relational concept that is concerned with categories sorry categories of self identification okay and social ascription right it is a relational concept because it's a it's a matter of uh, one being able to identify himself or herself with as we say the sh all the shared cultural practices images symbols beliefs etc uh, where one can identify that is why I remember Barker said early uh, uh, you know uh, early on in his uh, in his chapter that ethnicity race and nation are first and foremost matters of cultural identity okay so self identifications when we when we can identify ourselves to if not completely to a hu to a huge extent with with the different forms and products of our ethnic community okay we are yeah, we are uh, performing so to speak uh, an act of cultural identification and social ascription or of belonging to uh, socially to that cultural group. Further Barker says thus what we think of as our identity is dependent on what we think we are not this is very important. Okay? One as a member of an ethnic group it is not simply identifying with all these shared cultural products right of um, you know that we find in a community, but also understanding ourselves as different from the other as different from uh, he or she who does not belong to, to the ethnic um, group or ethnic community. Okay? That is why he says here what we think of as our identity is not to be understood only as the presence of you know certain, uh, certain symbols or the sharing of certain cultural products, but also as not or the absence of okay, or as not share, uh, sharing those that belong to the other group or another group. Right? Then he says consequently ethnicity is best understood as a process of this is very important boundary formation that has been constructed and maintained other under specific historical conditions. Okay? So, look at how this is uh, how, how this changes a ethnicity is a relational concept okay, in the sense that we can also that we can relate we can identify ourselves okay, as belonging and part belonging to a group as partaking of all the things held in common okay, by members of that group and of social belonging. Right? Second identity is however, not simply a matter of presence or, or matter of identifying right, with, with uh, common certain common uh, values uh, phenomena. It is also that you know you understand yourself as the member of an ethnic group by seeing to it that your boundaries right the boundaries are maintained. Uh, in the not difficult for us here to claim that much of ethnic you know or some cases of ethnic conflict have to do with you know uh, with one's fear right that one's ethnic boundaries are being threatened. Now, by ethnic boundaries, by boundary formation in this matter is not simply boundaries of one's homeland or boundary or territorial boundaries, these are also boundaries of culture, right? And in, in the sense of how we differentiate our cultural practices and products from another, uh, another ethnic group. So, consequently, again, as ba Barker says, ethnicity is best understood as a process of boundary formation that has been constructed and it has been maintained. Right, it has been maintained uh, under specific socio historical conditions both the construction and the maintenance of these boundaries uh, have been made under specific conditions. Right? Now, um, there are some important questions raised for instance many feel that the very word ethnic uh, you know a moment we say ethnic group for instance that it has to be what we what many uh, use loosely use the term loosely as a tribal group or uh, you know a, a marginalized group or you know um, a group which is not mainstream. 
some scholars very you know uh, provoke us by posing questions like these do whites form an ethnic group okay or uh, in 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 our in the usual you know um, acceptance of white as norm as a white community a white group as a norm okay do we uh, do we come to believe eventually that the that the white uh, whites as a group are the point of reference or they are the normative group can we say that whites form an ethnic group look at the slide here and see the point made by these critics is that we should defamiliarize whiteness as norm or as i just mentioned as a point of reference okay and they say that of course we should study white societies as ethnic groups and in studying white societies as ethnic groups what do we do we are going to look at what whites as belonging to a uh, an ethnic group share in terms of cultural practices values myths cultural sim symbols norms etc even that is to be put okay to a cultural studies exploration now further again on ethnicity this is what marker has to say one problem with the cultural concept of ethnicity is that some questions of power and racism may be sidelined now uh, race ethnicity these are terms that one uh, may not use uh, you know in place you know one in place of another but they are kind of uh, they are kindred terms in, in in certain ways okay so much so that the moment we talk about race studies and the moment we talk about ethnic studies it seems to some that moment you talk about race it becomes uh, you know um, race becomes a more belligerent site race is more a site of oppression or that race is more a site where where you know the uh, where issues of power and issues of um, Uh, uh, of racial oppression are more foregrounded right that is why barker says that you know when when we culturally when we cult from a cultural studies perspective when we study ethnicity uh, it may seem to us and perhaps it has been so okay that questions of um, power and racism even within an within ethnicity may be sidelined right let's see how this is what he says further ethnicity can be deployed to suggest that a social formation operates with plural and equal groups this is very this is very interesting okay it says the term ethnicity even as ethnic groups make border formations even if they very zealously you know uh, protect their own cultural and territorial borders uh, on the other hand this term may neutralize several very important political and uh, issues uh, issues issues of power for instance ethnicity may be deployed to suggest that a social formation operates with uh, with uh, with uh, with plurality and equal groups rather than hierarchical racialized groups okay it may seem uh, you know misleading you know misleadingly we may think that uh, ethnic groups live in great plural harmony and pluralism and that there that these are equal groups okay even within these the issues of hierarchy and racialized groups may be sidelined may not be foregrounded okay then barker says it has also been suggested that it diverts or ethnicity the study of ethnicity as is done by some uh, scholars diverts attention away from racism and towards the cultural characteristics of racialized minorities okay so if you are Uh, uh, there is a danger of talking about shared practices and sidelining or not foregrounding right uh, issues of power okay so we will now come to race which is the second word in our uh, you know second category uh, in our lecture today and uh, race as has been noted by scholars began as a biological discourse okay um particularly uh with the issue of skin pigmentation 
right? Dividing people into black, into white, um, yellow if you will, okay? Uh, it began as a biological discourse where uh, there were evident markers of physical differentiation, okay, in the population in the world, right? And what, look at this slide here please, what helped it was, uh, you know, uh, the appropriation of Darwinian theory, okay, uh, in what today many call uh, an unfortunate way of studying society, which is called social Darwinism. Okay? Uh, we are all aware of the theory of natural, the principle of natural selection and that is the bedrock of survival of reproduction. These are the pillars of uh, the thinking of, of, of Darwin, of Charles Darwin. Okay? Uh, the problem is when, when we kind of unproblematically and sometimes even irresponsibly borrow um, theoretical formulations made in the field of biology okay, to press upon or to, uh, you know, uh, to throw light on uh, issues that are human and cultural. Right? So, race began as a biological discourse uh, aided by social Darwinism, where they were the, the discourse included a typology, typologizing it included making hierarchies, okay, drawing lines of descent, uh, along with which uh, it was all the more evident that discourses of power and subordination would uh, eventually and almost naturally come into the picture, along with the real, very cruel realities of oppression. It is even said uh, that um, there was a time in which the scientific, you know, some members of the scientific community uh, in, uh, you know, in, in, in uh, Europe tried, you know, or carried out, uh, you know, um, scientific uh, research in a bid to prove that there were indeed important, uh, you know, genetic differences between uh, or among the races in the world and to also make as it is mentioned here typologies, hierarchies of definitions of characteristics, which ultimately led to, ren you know, to rendering some people of this world as being uh, inferior to others. Of course, such kind of science is today debunked and uh, there is no evidence, uh, so to speak, to hold or, or to enable anyone to argue today about uh, important, uh, you know, biological uh, differences in the, in, in the races, okay, among races uh, that may show one to be inherently inferior, right. Now, again, this is what Barker says and let us read it and then I shall explain it. Races do not exist outside of representation, rather they are formed in and by symbolization in a process of social and political power struggle. This is the shift we see, okay. Once, uh, you know, we, we move away from uh, the biological discourse, uh, the discourse of biology with which the study of or the articulation of race began, when we move into cultural studies, cultural studies shows us that the matter of race okay, is one or issues and aspects of race is uh, are those that are articulated through again an important word key concept representation. They are formed in by symbolization in a process of social and power struggle. Thus observable, please look at this slide here, thus observable characteristics are transformed into signifiers of race. Okay. What was you know, uh, uh, what was seen as something that could be marked physically on, you know, on the person, on a person, okay, which could be described physically becomes, uh, you know, by the uh, uh, time we have this discourse of cultural studies becomes one that is understood as signifiers, okay, as signifiers that signify, right, characteristics of race. This includes, as Barker says here, this includes the spurious appeal to essential biological and 
cultural difference. So we see that it is both, you know, beginning in biology and, uh, you know, now uh, currently, uh, we, uh, you know, currently uh, uh, this engagement with signifiers, the engagement with signifying processes or practices as far as the representation of race is concerned. We see that both the biological and the cultural differences are, uh, which says are spurious appeals to essential, this word is important, essential, which makes it an essential is that they essentially their biological differences, uh, even if even if there were essential biological cultural differences, uh, the problem happens only when you try to hierarchize the, these, when you try to render some of the differences as being, uh, you know, characteristics and differences as being better or worse compared to another, right. So, aspects of contemporary racial discrimination. So, today moving on from the biological, the, con the ways in which you know people of some races are discriminated against, particularly uh, as Barker shows in his in this chapter, particularly in the western world is uh, discrimination in terms of the labor market, discrimination in terms of housing market, distribution sorry discrimination in terms of education, of access to education, even the, the education system as a whole and discrimination certainly in media and in cultural representation in different media forms. Uh, how races are, are they being stereotyped, okay? uh, are they being stuck so to speak on uh, you know uh, in one image, on one particular image. So, the contemporary is not that ra uh, racial discrimination as cultural studies practitioners prove. Uh, and argue um, very, very uh, uh, you know, radically that racial discrimination uh, exists today in these, particularly in areas of labor uh, and housing market, in uh, in education and in media and cultural representation. Therefore, as Barker says, racisms uh, are for the forms and realities of racism again are not homogeneous. Right? Is where this is very important. Within the, this broader rubric of race, we will we, sh we uh, should be able to realize that the forms and realities of racism are not homogeneous. They are different in different times, in different spaces. Then they are different historical realities that lead to this change, or sorry, to this different uh, difference in the forms and realities. For instance. Barker uh, shows here British Asians are stereotyped as doctors and shopkeepers, while young Afro Caribbean men in Britain are cast in the roles of criminals. Now, media in many, in uh, I am sure we are, one can find out instances of movies, of soaps, okay, where this kind of typecasting is done. Then, further, the new racism in Britain relies not on biological discourses of superiority as I said that discourse is now fading as in South Af African apartheid, but on cultural differences at this from cultural differences that exclude black people from being fully a part of the nation. And this is the word that we are going to end this uh, you know uh, part of the lecture with ok. We have studied the uh, race uh, issues of race and ethnicity from a cultural studies perspective and we are going to talk about the nation. Now, nation uh, as far as nation is concerned, how does it relate to race and ethnicity? Okay? Now, let us read here again, race and ethnicity according to Barker have been closely allied to forms of nationalism that conceive of a nation as a shared culture. So, the common point among all these three is that uh, like race, like uh, ethnicity, okay, the nation is also something to do with an entity to that, that, that depends on and is constituted by or constructed by a shared culture, requiring that ethnic boundaries should not cut across political ones. There are culturally formed, nation is culturally formed by contingent historical circumstances, Na nation is never a given and cultural studies insists if you remember that nothing is a given, it always has a history that has led to its, um, to its formation and there are contingent historical forces um, also in the construction of nation. Okay? And nation is the collective form of organization and identification. 
Okay, therefore, nation may be looked or may be you know, considered in two levels. Okay, then let us look at this slide here. The nation is at once A, a political organization, and B, and not less importantly, a nation is also a matter of cultural representation, nation is also discursive, and nation is symbolic. Okay. It is not to deny the existence of a nation, but it is very important for us to realize here to understand and even argue that the na a nation has a, is a political organization, the nation has its national boundaries all right, but at an equally important level it is also about representation. Okay. It is also about understanding and the nation, nationality, nationhood okay, in terms of representation and it is in that sense it is also constituted by discourse and it is also constituted uh, by symbols. Right? Now, we shall see and end with this, uh, we shall see how this happens. So, the in, in the discourse of nation, the kindred terms are there for nation, nationalism, nation states and national identity. So, the nation is understood therefore, in terms of like ethnicity, in terms of a certain origin okay, which is to be to be uh, you know held up by all the members of the nation of, of a certain tradition that again is to be uh, you know uh, to be respected right by members and the continuity that there is a continuity between uh, past and present discursively therefore, okay, uh, and also symbolically right the origins tradition of the you know of the past and the continuity with the origins and tradition is what also gives credence apart from the political organization apart from uh, you know the bound territorial boundaries to our understanding of nation. Therefore, if a nation state is a political concept right referring to administrative apparatus and territory national identity is a form of imaginative, now this is an important word, imaginative identification with the symbols and discourses of the nation state. So, uh, remember we have to understand these two things you know sort of contrapuntally being there, there is the territory, there is the administration uh, you know uh, it is a political uh, uh, entity, but at the same time okay, it is this would not have been possible or do this for instance the continuity with tradition and origins this would not have been possible had there not been what he calls here the imaginative once imaginative understanding even emotional attachment with the symbols and images and representations of nationhood. Stuart Hall now this is uh, Stuart Hall is Hall's um, uh, formulation is brought uh, to us by you know in uh, by Barker and let us read from here instead of thinking of national cultures as unified we should think of them as a discursive device which represents difference as unity or identity. Okay, they are cross cut by deep internal divisions and differences and unified only through the exercise of different forms of cultural power. So, even the, na the nation is you know uh, not to be seen as a given even in terms given by Stuart, that, that Stuart Hall says here importantly, we should think of na nationalism, national cultures as a discursive device. Right? Finally, we will end with a reference to um, a very important book named or entitled Imagine Communities by Benedict Anderson and I am sure uh, some of you are aware or acquainted with this book. Uh, the whole idea of nationalism of nationhood okay, is one according to Benedict Anderson that is constructed through one's imagination, okay, through one's collective imagination and he uses the term collect imagined communities uh, you know to describe uh, nation or nationalism nationhood. According to Anderson let us look at this slide here according to and Anderson uh, the nation is an imagined community where national identity okay, uh, emanates from a narrative of shared symbols, images, symbols and rituals. Okay. So, so, belonging to a nation we belong to a community all right, but that is an imagined community this point that we have 
you know, talked about even earlier. It's an imagined community, and the, which which uh, you know uh, which is established through a narration. Remember, a narration has to be from you know the origin through tradition and through uh, you know uh, claims of continuities of one's uh, tradition of a hallowed tradition even and uh, the identity and I will be, uh, we are now going full coming full circle in this case we talked about race ethnicity etc as matters of cultural identity and even nation nationhood is a matter of cultural identity and the narrative of shared origins of tradition of images or uh, and symbols is what holds this community of members of a nation together okay uh, one's national anthem then uh, one's uh, you know uh, uh, one's national flag okay followed by you know all uh, for instance a different uh, we also have a uh, national flower national bird uh, and it is you know, tea is being now to, to, to be the national drink. Okay, uh, these are all these cultural forms and products that add, right, to the imagination of and add to the narration of a nation. In this sense, therefore, the nation is cultural. The nation is also abstract. Okay, and the nation is imagined. So uh, we will quickly end uh, with with Anderson, who says here that the nation is imagined because the members of even the smallest nation will never know most of their fellow members we or will never meet them or even hear of them in that case how are we then how do we then identify as you know as uh, brothers or um, sisters if you will of, of one country okay that is why he says the nation is imagined it is imagined because members of even the smallest nation will never know most of their fellow members meet them or even hear of them yet in the minds of each lives the image of their communion the nation is imagined as limited because even the largest of them encompassing perhaps a billion living beings has finite if elastic boundaries beyond which lie other nations. So, remember this the other the concept of otherness the feeling of otherness okay, is what is very important not only in the case of ethnicity okay, boundaries are important okay, we are what we are what, what others are not right. Uh, these definition defining by negation okay by negatives is also extremely important right then anderson says it is imagined the nation is imagined as sovereign because the concept was born in an age in which the enlightenment and revolution were destroying the legitimacy of the divinely ordered hierarchical dynastic systems that which means that even the idea of nationhood is an idea of na the idea of nation is one that has come through us it was never there Okay, as a given, as a cultural or linguistic given, if they were there in our vocabulary, it is historically, uh, you know, it came about as a result of historically contingent events, right? And the enlightenment and, uh, you know, uh, the different revolutions like the French Revolution, for instance, okay, these sort of ultimately led to uh, carving out the idea of a nation. So, the idea of a nation, which of course, in the minds of so many people is uh, you know one to be protected to be uh, one that is hallowed uh, one that is to be loved is shown by cultural studies as one that uh, also has come about because of historical forces and is ultimately also a matter of uh, symbolization of representation okay and of identity formation finally uh, Anderson says nation is imagined as a community because regardless of the actual inequality and exploitation that may prevail in each the nation is always conceived as a deep horizontal comradeship. Okay? Um, this is again trying to you know to, to, to sort of downplay uh, the heterogeneity and in, uh, of, of any nation okay, within any nation and to conceive it as a deep horizontal comradeship. Finally, ultimately it is this fraternity that makes it possible over the past two centuries for so many millions of people not so much to kill as willing to die for such what he calls importantly limited imaginings. Okay? A radical statement here and uh, you will understand it as 
uh, you know, even our desire to die for one's country is one that is discursive, that one that is constructive, right. So, uh, I hope I have been able to, you know, uh, to get these connections, right, and the connection uh, between race, ethnicity, nation, uh, and the, uh, the complexities also, uh, by uh, trying to explain it through the chapter on ethnicity, race, and nation by Chris Barker. And we will quickly look at one or two questions. What is the scope of studying race and ethnicity within the framework of cultural studies? It is that the shifting character of cultural understandings we, we seen in terms of representation as po the politics of representation okay, and also cultural identity associated with ethnicity are to be seen as changing forms okay, and the intersections between race, class and gender these are also variables and also importantly the legacy of colonialism. This is the scope of studying race and ethnicity within the framework of cultural studies. What are generally shared by members of ethnic groups? And we find that members of ethnic groups share many things. They are among them norms, values, beliefs, cultural symbols, cultural practices, myths, blood ties and the idea of a homeland. How is race studied within cultural studies? Race is studied in terms of symbolization and representation within cultural studies. Then we get, can get a question like how is national identity a form of imaginative identification? Uh, the nation is not just a geographical identity with specific borders, not only simply uh, in, uh, nor is it simply uh, or only uh, you know a matter of political organization, but national identity, nationhood, nationalism are to do also and very importantly with the narrative of shared symbols, of shared images, okay, of symbols, rituals, of homelands, etcetera, which have carry a lot uh, of, uh, you know, a um, lot of emotional interpolation, okay, if you will, okay, and where we invest a lot of our emotions. So, thank you for being with me in this lecture and um, uh, we will move on. We have about uh, four lectures, uh, three or four lectures left in this module and um, I shall see you very soon. Thank you.